Welcome to another live episode, Meet Your National Funeral and Cemetery. This is a specialist. Today, we're going to interview Mr. Andy Lopez, all the way from Seattle, Washington. We're traveling right now to Seattle, Washington. Mr. Lopez, are you there? <laughs> How are you doing today? Oh, man, it's the best day of my life, Mr. Lopez. It's so good to see you, man, with the, the quarantine thing going on, uh, safer at home, or sh what they say, sh safer at home, or stay at home, or I don't know what it is now. What is it? Uh, you know, just basically stay home and stop, and stop getting people sick. That's usually the best thing I, t I tell people. Okay, okay. So how you been, anyway? <laughs> uh, you know, doing extremely well. Um, navigating, of course, through this, like everybody else, it's been a learning curve for many people. Um, but busy, busier than uh, I deserve to be. And uh, we're having a good time just learning new things every single day and collaborating with a lot of different people. So uh, it's exciting times for us. Exactly. Well, it's good. So collaborating with uh, the profession as a whole, knowing that you are the National Cemetery Funeral Operations Specialist, what are some of the things that you are currently seeing as you collaborate with people across the country? What are some of the things that you're seeing that's going to actually change because of the COVID-19? What are some of the things that you're going to see as the profession changes? What's going to be some of the different things that you have heard about and you're looking forward to? And what are some of the things that we have to adapt to? You know, that, that's a good question because it, it goes really deep into the last 20 years of, of this profession. We have been talking about live streaming. We have been talking about the digital media and the digital word, um, digital marketing, how to really effectively engage your customer, your audience when they are home instead of, of relying on the try to prove methods that we have in our profession, which is face to face. Of course, there's still a power to that, but we have, we have figured out that you can still conduct business digitally, and in many ways, uh, some folks are more comfortable doing it digitally than they are doing the face-to-face -face meeting and going into their home. Uh, that, that has been very eye-opening for some organizations and also the live streaming aspect of it. And I can tell you, I've seen some great, great live streaming and I've seen some huge failures. Um, and, and, and it's because we're, we're hurrying up to try to catch up to technology that's been there and available for us for many years. And having to to teach someone just how to log in and figure out how to use their their laptop has been um, a challenge at times. But interestingly enough, uh, those who really put in the blood, sweat, and tears are doing a great job at it. Excellent, excellent. So knowing that you said about live streaming, and I think that you said that some of them are pretty good, and that some of them are not so good. Uh, one of the things I've learned, and we've been listening and hearing through some of the national platforms, NFDA, National Funeral Directors Association, ICCFA, uh, the different tools like uh, doing it Facebook Live. A lot of people are using that. Um, Facebook has actually uh, interrupted some live streams because of the music and people have to put up there and post those kind of things. One of the things I've also seen, I've, I'm actually going to be interviewing a national, uh, what we call live stream company that's in our space on Thursday at 4 p.m. And he uh, is talking about having your own platform, your own live stream platform where you can put your logo up. We, we actually put a, a virtual uh, registry book and people can actually text their information in. So now the funeral home in the cemetery can still go ahead and do that. So what would you say for funeral homes and cemeteries to really expose themselves to this new digital world? Because it's a digital world. Uh, it's a world that, like you said, the last 20 years, we really didn't embrace. But I think all of a sudden, in the last 60 days, we have almost been forced into it as a profession to do something that we're not probably either comfortable with or used to. As I know you've heard in, in your travels, we've always done it this way. <laughs> well, it's, uh, <laughs> we, we, we absolutely understand and know that, right? Um, look, he, If you're if you're going to go into digital marketing, this is the beauty of live streaming, guys. So as we move forward, you know technical difficulties do happen, 
but we will catch up here and make sure that everybody understand. This is one of the things that when you do live streaming, that can happen. So one of the things we want you guys to be aware of, uh, we just have some technical difficulties. Mr. Lopez will be back as we get those things taken care of. But if you have any questions, if you're on Facebook, if you come from LinkedIn, if you're on Periscope, whatever platform you're in, if you have any questions for Mr. Lopez, please uh, share your questions and we'll post them as we move forward. So, you know, one of the things that we try to do, and this is one of the areas that we try to make sure that on your platform, uh, maybe he got kicked off of his, he could have been, uh, maybe he got kicked off his internet, uh, could have got a call or something. So, but one of the biggest things that we have to do is go through and make sure that as we navigate these new waters, as a funeral home, cemetery, cremation specialist, that we're giving families the best possible platform so that they can engage in us, engage with us uh, in every possible way. Uh, right. like, there you go. Did you get kicked off there, Mr. Lopez? <laughs> it's, it's actually ironic because what I was going to talk about was a dedicated line for your social media platforms. Um, <laughs> so you do not have exactly what just happened. Happened. Uh, it's 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 really funny, almost comical. So here's what happens, and and when when you're when you're doing live streaming, um, a lot of the organizations decided to jump in and use Facebook Live, which is the easiest platform to use. Or they'll use Zoom, or they use whatever other platform it is. They'll grab a random phone, put it on an iP on a tripod, or use an iPad or whatever uh, digital device they've got that that works with it. Turn it on, put it in a corner in the room, and they're now doing a live cast of whatever it is. Great. That's a great start. However, these platforms have no filters. Anything that is said in that room, it's captured by that little tiny microphone that is super powerful. So I've heard people use profanity, have very private conversations when they thought they were having a conversation about the decedent, and saying very, very uh, interesting things. Uh, they're being picked up by the microphones. And every time I see someone broadcasting, uh, doing, doing a live feed, I, I click and see what they're doing. So we're doing amazing work. Sometimes you see the wires running across the funeral home or outside of the cemetery um, or, or the camera sideways. But the worst part is when you're feeding this data and it starts cutting off because there are so many devices logged into that network that it breaks it down. And if you have your own platform, if you actually pay for, for, the, for, for the licensing to use a platform that does this for you the right way, you will have a clean line, no other extras. Like Facebook has so much to it. It's not just a platform to video stream with. Uh, if you're using Zoom, Zoom is great for meetings. Zoom is not for you to sit there and broadcast because not just anyone can have access. Um, so if you have the bandwidth and you can actually invest in the technology, I absolutely recommend it because that will make whatever choice uh, you decide on, whoever you want to use as a service, uh, just make sure that you have a dedicated server for it, that you have the dedicated lines, that you're not just relying on a wireless network that's body at best. Because I've yet to be in a location, a funeral home or cemetery, where I'm walking through and I do not lose signal. Uh, so knowing that as you're transferring from inside to outside, usually you lose signal there or you'll get kicked off and then you click back on and you're five minutes ago when they're actually now doing the, uh, the service inside a chapel. So um, there, there are some challenges if you're just getting into this after the fact. And we can be much better at this if we just use the technology that's available to us. Good. Well, one of the things that we do, uh, Mr. Lopez, is we will do a funeral home cemetery checkup, a digital checkup, where we can come in, look at those things. And I know that if they want to contact you or we can go through and make sure that they get the proper information that they would need. I always tell people there's no obligation because what you currently have, you can continue to use. But if you do want to move into an area where you could actually have someone come in, make an assessment, we do those consultations free of charge so that you will know really how to truly digitally, what we call digital marketing, because a lot of people do what you said. They go out on this broad band, they're out there, everybody has access to them, 
some families that we've spoken to don't want to have everybody viewing their services. Some people want it to be private. Some people want their viewing to be private. Some people even want to view the internment, you know, where the final resting place is. Some of the funeral homes and cemeteries are not even equipped to do the private internment live stream. So these are some of the things that we can go through and do. Another area is, and, you know, I want to ask you about this. Now that we know that 30 million people are currently unemployed, but what would you say about our profession and how should we approach trying to find some talented people coming to our profession, both cemetery, funeral, cremation areas? Well, uh, actually, traditionally in a down economy is when we actually find some of the best talents, when people actually decide to make a career out of the funeral profession. because. The down economies means that the job market has changed. The, the opportunities have changed out there. And people are looking for something that's not going to collapse on them every 10 years. Um, we are not recession proof. People say that all the time. Oh, it's recession proof. But no, we are recession resistant. Um, we, we, we can persevere through some of the worst um, disasters that have happened. Um, stock market crashes. People still need our services. Uh, does everyone stay working? No. But if you're good at what you do and people trust you and rely on you and you have ethics, um, you'll, you'll, you'll stay on. So in order to recruit in this day and age, it's, it's just getting the message out there, knowing exactly what, what you're looking for people to do. But here's, here's the biggest thing. Once you recruit them, once you get them on board, train them. Train them, coach them, develop them, and do not just put someone behind a desk to answer phones and here's the who you're going to call and here, here's what you have to do because if you do not show them and teach them, they'll get lost and you'll lose them. The second the economy comes back and someone has a job that's close to what they're doing, they'll leave. Wow. So, so in your estimation and what you've learned over time, you be that training is a, a big component to people onboarding into our profession. Absolutely. Um, you don't know what you don't know until you realize you just don't know. And there's no worse place to be in, in, in a position in which you have to answer a question to a family of the worst possible day of their life. And you don't know the answer because you haven't been trained correctly. Or if you're talking to someone about prearranging their funeral and they ask you about something that you should know about, but you haven't been trained. And that's going to happen on a regular basis. However, if you have someone with you, while you're going through the process, while you're learning, someone that can save you from yourself, essentially, that always um, tends to make people stay. Um, it really creates this, 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 this support staff that you can then start building a bench of trainers within your team. And they're not necessarily labeled trainers. They're just the people who have a passion for what we do, that do it well, they do it the way you taught them, and always expect what you expect as these trainers are teaching, but that's how you're going to have retention. Retention comes from uh, from the people having the belief that the organization that they're, they're representing, especially in this profession, that their organization is in line with their values, it's in line with, with their needs, their wants, and, and most importantly, that they actually care as to whether or not they're making a, a good living and if they're having fun and enjoying what they do. Excellent, excellent. So, so let me back up a little bit. Could you share with me what is some of your personal identities? Like, I know that you were in the military. How did you actually end up coming to the cemetery funeral profession? How did you end up in this particular market? Well, um, I was a little kid the first time I, I was around the funeral business uh, when a guy named uh, Fred Hunter um, had a, a cemetery funeral home near my home. And a guy named Joey that had a flower shop uh, introduced me to him so I could do odds and ends. And then my mother was a clerk for him uh, in that place for a while. And that was my, my beginning in the funeral profession. And then, of course, I went in the military. And then I came back. I was in retail for a long time. I walked away from the profession. Uh, and, and one of the best things that happened to me, because learning from the world of Home Depot in, in retail, you, you couldn't have better training. Um, once I left that, I came back to the profession and did everything from owning a casket company to building pre-need sales teams to selling cemetery properties, working on grounds, doing maintenance. Um, I've never been afraid to do any of the jobs that we do. Um, I was a member of the disaster response team in Missouri. Um, unfortunately, I've been part of some 
huge, huge uh, disasters where we have to come in and do what we do and and clean up, essentially. Um, but then one of the one of the best things that happened in my career was uh, quite a few years ago, or over ten years ago. Um, our, our good friend, um, today's his birthday, and we ask, what many of us know that um, today being his birthday is the first time he's not around to to have a drink and say happy birthday. Scott Sells convinced me to um, go to SCI and work in California with him and, and build a brand. And we went from writing around $35 million a, in pre-arranged funeral and cemetery business in a year to doing over 60. Um, and it wasn't because of anything other than we were we were lucky to find the right players, build the right team, have the right folks to, that really believed. Um, and through that, you you have your mentors and you have your your, your friends um, that you trust. Um, and, the, uh, and you have to have those folks that will tell you what you don't want to hear. I can pick up the phone and call a guy named Kenny Howe. And Kenny has been my sounding board for many years. Kenny will tell me, you're doing okay. Kenny will tell me, I just don't think you're heading the right direction. Kenny will tell me, I think you need to stop and pray about that. Um, and, and the list goes on. I can, uh, I can tell you that one of the best things that have, has happened in, in, in my career has been not, not just the, the lifestyle that I have, not just the trips and, and the wonderful places that I've been able to sit as a consultant, but I've actually been able to to meet some of the most incredible people I've ever met. Um, and and that's, that's really the best thing that's happened to me. Uh, with SCI, after I left SCI, I went to, back to the independent world um, and then ended up uh, with, with Stonemore as we divested many properties and changed a lot of things and, and built a great team there. Um, talk about cohesion. We actually were able to incorporate sales and marketing and operations all in one box in one region and effectively um, do our job and do it well as a unit rather than a divided front. In order to conquer any challenge, uh, you have to have a united front and everyone has to have the same common goal. And that's what we would do. Uh, just share and communicate and execute. Repeat. Excellent. Well, one of the things I can share with you is that uh, it is great to be your friend. Uh, I consider you a great colleague, someone that we both know. I know you. I called you often, uh, also present some things that we're doing with technology and things of that nature. And I think that just knowing that there are people that we can sit down with has been in this profession, been in the trenches, because I think it's very important. A lot of us have been in the trenches where we've been belly to belly. We've been at kitchen tables with families. We've been in the at need arrangement. We've been sitting at a cemetery uh, place. Uh, we've also laid soldiers to rest. Like, you know, all the funeral homes and cemeteries I work with, we never mourn their death, we celebrate their life. That flag comes in and they do that military fold. It is so beautiful. And uh, I'm grateful of all the places that you and I've been throughout the country, you know, all the different conventions we've had and everything else. It is uh, just a beautiful thing. And every time, you know, we go to convention, I think it's important that we do get that continuing education. How valuable do the education is that, you know, with the university and everything that we do in our profession, uh, how about these conventions that, you know, right now there are pause, but what do you think about these conventions? How, how valuable are they to the, to the profession? You know, our conferences are where we actually get to collaborate. Our conferences are really, they're extremely important. And, 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 I, and I can tell you, I've, I've, I've had conversations with, with folks who have multiple locations and have never attended a single conference. The, the word of God tells you is iron sharpens iron one, man sharpens another also. It, that, that relates today in business as well as it did in those days because we can only get sharper if we're collaborating and, and really teaching each other how to grind better, how to get up and do it different, how to grow. Uh, we, we have to understand that there's, there's a lot of folks out there who are still just marketing to baby boomers. And that's a huge mistake. These conferences, if you go and you participate and you listen, you go to the breakout sessions and you invest in the organization, you will get a lot more out of your business, out of your life, and out of the quality of product that you're delivering to the families that you're serving. Because ultimately, 
Um, these conferences, yeah, they're fun. We always have a lot of fun. We, we always find a place where there's music and, and we get together and everybody knows we're there and it, it's happened everywhere. However, this is where you go to get better. This is where you go to meet someone that can offer you a business um, that you never thought was possible because the business that you have today can be changed and transformed into something. It's elevating the level of service at every stage. Excellence comes from trial and error, from practicing, rehearsing, and doing it over and over again, better every single time. Doing it the same way every single time for 20 years is not the right way because people change. The audience has changed. So going to these conferences, you will find a new message that fits the audience that you now have. Um, I, I can tell you that I've yet to go to one conference that I haven't walked away with one of those things that I said, wow, I'm, I'm going to implement that and I'm going to do it immediately. And it's going to change the way we do business. And through that, we have found success because I want to enable and empower my teams to have everything they need, not just keep doing what we think we know, because 1982 is not 2020. And if you're still managing with a 1982 mindset and marketing with that same mindset and discussing with that same mindset, then you're just doing a presentation and not having conversations with people who are more pragmatic, who are more cost conscious, who are going to shop you and are going to be more value driven than just your name on your sign outside of your location. Wow. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you are a specialist, because what you just delivered there was some valuable information just about the fact that iron sharpened of iron. And, you know, we have to help perfect each other. I call it pop, perfecting our performance, P-O-P. A lot of times we do not sit down with each other and just bounce stuff off each other, collaborate. Like you said, for me, not only is the consumer important, but I believe the first consumer is those that work within our organization. We got to treat those who, so the people, our teams, everybody who work with us, we got to treat them with the utmost respect because I believe the way they get treated that's how they treat the consumer. And we want to make sure that every family has a right to say no to the very best, but they must be presented the very best. And what I mean by that is not just our product. We got to be presenting the best possible people, to other people. So if you do train them and develop them, like you said, what, what great advice that you can share with people out there in the cemetery funeral profession and the cremation space, I think is very, very important. Uh, let me ask you this, because you are, you know, we're in the military. We thank you for your service. Uh, obviously, we know that COVID-19 is here. At one point, I saw you doing the 22 push-ups uh, because of the fact that, you know, we lose soldiers. Uh, I just recently heard, uh, today is Tuesday, I think on Saturday, how many people during this time are actually committing suicide, not just even outside of the military, just in general. Speak to that. Uh, on, on how difficult it is for us to not forget those who serve and the difficulties they're having right now, even more so because we are sheltered. Um, well, look, mental health during a, a crisis like this and when you're bunkered down in your home, um, that's always been an issue. Uh, it's, it's a prominent issue uh, days like today. Um, veterans groups, we, we need to just check on each other's buddies. Um, you have to get your six. That's what we call it. If, if you know someone that's struggled in the past and you have a connection to them, pick up the phone and call them. Find out if they need anything. Drop them off a book. Um, call them on using Zoom or FaceTime or any of the many different platforms that are out there to communicate. Keep them engaged. Um, watch your social media communication. Sometimes if they're start going into the gutters with what they're saying, their mind's probably not right and you need to make a phone call and get them right. Um, SaveTheBrave.org is an organization that I'm involved with and that what we focus on is preventing death by suicide um, because it's, it's, it's unnecessary and it's going to happen and unfortunately it happens every day. Uh, we, lose, we lose veterans uh, every day because, because they just can't handle this world anymore and make, and make the decision that, that they're better off without it. Um, not everyone understands it. I don't think anyone ever will fully understand because unless you've been there, you don't know. What can we do to support them? It's simple. Just communicate. Keep in touch. 
don't lose sight that there's someone there that could probably use a little a little communication and and a human touch even if it's through a video camera um, it, it's it's there's no there's no perfect way of preventing suicide uh, all we can do is offer resources uh, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, the VA also has. If you call any Veterans Administration Hospital, don't answer the phone, you'll get a recording. If you're thinking, have, having thoughts of suicide, now press this button, and that's all you have to do. Um, so th that that always has helped, but also uh, reminding everyone that there, there, there's a light at the, at the end of this tunnel. We're, we're gonna come out of this stronger as a nation. We're gonna persevere, and um, and that's all we can do. Uh, it's unfortunate, but when, when we did the 22 push-ups, um, a lot of people said more than 22 die per day. I said, absolutely, just 22. That was just some uh, symbolism, right, uh, to just have a number to go to. Uh, however, th there's a lot more that are, we're losing daily, um, and, and we shouldn't be. So we shouldn't be. There are resources out there. Well, good. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, like he said, uh, all the resources you talked about, please reach out to the suicide hotline call the local veteran administration, please remember, even if you have time to volunteer, go out and volunteer, you know, look out not just for the military person, even those in your family that may be struggling right now during this time. So if, if you know someone who's lost someone to COVID-19, all of us, let's make sure that we're praying for our family, our friends, those and then our colleagues, those in the cemetery funeral profession, a lot of people sometimes forget that we are also, uh, human, we have emotion, we deal with a lot of stuff, and we see a lot more than the average citizen. So just make sure you keep everybody up. Um, Mr. Lopez, let me ask you this, because I think it's very important as we segue in this direction. Where do you see the profession going in the next, say, three, five, ten years, even after we come out of this uh, pandemic? I, I, I truly believe that it is never going to be business as usual ever again. Um, as a society, our behaviors will change. Um, you'll be more hesitant to drink out of your buddy's glass. Um, you'll be more hesitant to just sh shake everybody's hand. Um, the, the, the reality and the impact it has had in the way we live at home, um, those of us who are always on the road, the road warriors that are never home, um, are now realizing being home with family, it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, you know, uh, especially those who have little ones. I see my neighbors. I, I look outside. My neighbors are actually walking around with their kids on a regular basis every single day. You never saw that before. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine, and he said to me, he said, it's like we, when we were kids. When we were kids, we were outside. We were outside with our parents. Uh, we were doing stuff. Now everything is in front of the, the TV or in front of the iPad or, or the phone, but now we're being forced to actually be outside and be social with our cir circle because we can't be social with everybody else. Um, the business itself will change because now we have adapted ourselves. So there's different platforms that would allow families to actually interact with us without ever having to leave their home. And if those are adapted correctly and people actually are, are embracing them, it can actually change the business. You, you may not need as many people as you thought you needed. Uh, companies around the country are probably going to sit down and say, do we really need that many people doing that job? Considering that during the, uh, the, the COVID lockdown, we were getting done just as much just by having people at home. Um, and so, and, and other places will say we need more people. So I think how we interact with each other and our, and our customers, um, has fundamentally already changed. And I, I don't see that we will go back to business as usual uh, 100%. Uh, and if we do immediately go back to business as usual, adaptations are coming. People will, 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 will change the way they even um, communicate with their teams. I mean, talk about software like Microsoft Teams or, or Zoom. You can have a meeting without having everyone drive two hours and having to pay for all that salary. And productivity actually has, there's been studies that have been done. The people, people are working from home, they're actually working more hours than they normally would and getting more done in, in, while, while they're home than they used to when they were in the office because you have no distractions, except of course your kids and 
the family. So there, there's a value to it. And there's also uh, the detriment of you're isolated. And if you're not in the office interacting with your colleagues, you're not sharpening that blade. You're not collaborating. You can do that digitally here and there in a, in a format, but I just don't know that that will ever replace that, that, that personal touch of having a conversation in a coaching session. And you can really sense someone's enthusiasm and drive when they're coaching you through whatever it is. Yeah, that's, that's one of the areas that I look at because I still look at the funeral cemetery profession, the cremation side as a very big relationship business. I mean, we are into relationship. Families are relationships. A lot of funeral homes and cemeteries, they know people who come to the funeral home. They, they bury many of their family members uh, working in the cemetery for over 10 years. And I, I would know who comes, you know, all the time to visit their particular loved one, look at their spouse. I mean, I've seen people come five, six years. Every month they would come. And you build a relationship with people that you normally would never have a relationship with. Also with the colleagues, the people that you work with. And knowing their strengths and knowing all the things they can do and how they can help you even in the office. Uh, I've actually, because we've been submitting uh, business while we've been under COVID, uh, some of the people that we took business to have to call us back and say, well, we're, we're working at home right now. So it's going to give us a little bit. We got to actually get somebody from the office because now the office staff is so limited. Everything's not at the home. So they still got to work with the office to make sure we get all the paperwork and all the things we need. Um, we've also had some new platforms where we can uh, do DocuSign. People are actually signing documents. Uh, now Deck is another one where you can do that. Um, we also do everything through a login where we go to right onto the paperwork and we're doing online signatures right there. And we actually have a phone call now you can make where the family can actually sign. So these are a lot of different things that are changing the profession, but at the same time, enhancing it. I, I, I do believe that at some point we're going to get back because I still think people like the fact that we allow them to either come into the funeral home, into the cemetery, or they've invited us out to their home. And you know, I, I know that it's going to be diminished, but I don't think it's going to be done away with. And again, we have to drive the profession. You know, we, as we do it. And, you know, we, we have to practice social distance in the same way, continue to do it. So the next thing is, what do you enjoy most uh, about being in this in this profession? What, what is like one of the things that you say, hey, this is my get up and go. This is why I get up every day. This is what makes me go. What is one of the most enjoyable things that you like about being in this profession? Now, you know, you, you, you can't ask me a question like that and split it up like that, not expecting um uh... The, the, the actual answer because I mean there's a difference between what I like about this profession and what gets me up every day yeah. those are not the same thing um, well give me both what, of them. <laughs> all right what do I like about this profession I I, I, I love you Keith Charles you're, you're a good thank friend you. thank you and my I friend say, uh, in, in my my years in this profession I have built some incredible relationships that in any other uh, profession I've ever been in have never could have imagined having um, the friends, the, the connections, the trust, um, that, 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 that respect that we have for each other and how we, we rely on each other when we need it, need it the most. I can make a phone call if I have someone that I know that needs something. I can tell you a friend of mine, my friend Scott Husing, who will probably kill me for using his name, um, his horse passed away horse uh, someone's horse is like their child it's it's your best friend it's the, the one person and when scooter passed away i saw that and immediately i made a phone call who do i call i call my friend george clark george clark for funeral home gifts i i reached out to him and to carl and i said can you guys help me out and make a blanket with this photo and send it to scott before i could finish the says it's, it's done andy and Scott received a blanket. Um, that no questions. Um, th th those are the friendships that we have. I had a gold star family that that really needed, um, really, re really um, hurting. Um, there, 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 there was there, there was a friend of mine who whose son was was killed in action, and their their dog had died, and that was his dog. And that was all that was left of last connection. And I wanted to do something special for them. And I didn't know how. And I 
spoke to my friend Kim and reached out to her. And sure enough, in, in glass, Kim Price made a beautiful glass piece that actually has three different colors, red, white, and blue. And red, white, and blue is sand from Afghanistan, a little bit of, of Lena the dog, and a little bit of Sean. And they're all together in a, va in a base in, in her house. And it's, it's special. And what do I like about this business? I like helping people. I like the fact that I can help families. Um, I always joke to my friends, I'm the, I'm, I'm the one guy you never want to call for a hookup, but when you need me, I'm there. And I know I can count on my friends to be there. I can tell you I've asked Lee Lodge, you know, a hundred different times. I'm exaggerating a hundred, but I, I've, I've called on my friends in the East Coast and the West Coast when I've needed something for someone that they didn't even know. And these funeral directors and, and area managers and vice presidents and, and, and location managers, that they all drop everything they're doing to help a family. Not to help me. It's because I asked and they know that these people need something extra and they do it and they do it quick. And that's what we do um, is that, that brotherhood, uh, that loyalty, that, that respect. Um, and you, you, you know, Scott Sells, God rest his soul. Um, and today's his birthday. I don't know if I said that already. Um, Cinco de Mayo, you can't forget. We give it to him to have been born in Cinco de Mayo because he sure knew how to, how to throw a party. Um, but he was one of the best mentors anybody could have ever had. And our, our mantra is loyalty, um, camaraderie, and respect. Awesome. You have to have that. You have to have that. You were expected to have that. Yeah. Um, that's what I love. What gets me out of bed in the morning? My why. Yeah. That decision that you have to make every morning. Are you going to grind? Are you going to make it happen? Because the, what's the old saying? There's three types of people, right? Those are watch things happen, wonder what happened, and make things happen. I choose to make things happen. I choose to get up out of bed. And whether I'm in my robe and my flippy floppies all day, I have a cup of coffee and I'm on that phone and I'm grinding and I'm calling and I'm following up. And if I have someone that needs something, I do whatever is required in order to get them what they need so they can continue on to be successful. Because my job is to make sure that others are successful. And how do I find success within me? It's by looking at the people that I've been able to support and help through uh, all these years. Uh, what better place th th than this profession to find what I had in the military, which is you, you have your downline in the military, all those people that have worked with you that you know that you're intertwined with. Here in our profession, doing what I do, doing what you do, how many people do you have? You, you can't even put them on a list that you have taught the trade craft that, it, that is that what we do. And they're making a living doing it and they're really good at it. And they're doing amazing things for families. At the worst possible day of someone's life, someone that we taught our business, our trade, has helped the family get through that hard time and made it easier for them. And for me, that's a win. And I grew up in a different environment where um, I never had anything that I thought I'd, I'd have today, you know, and it's um, life has been good to me. And my, my driving force is to make sure others have that opportunity. Excellent. Excellent. Well, one of the things we talk about is end of life matters. The reason why I call it end of life matters because end of life it does matter. And a lot of people don't want to discuss this, but we are event planners. We get the opportunity to do with end of life on a regular basis. We get to celebrate people's life and not mourn their death. We get to celebrate our wives and we get to celebrate family. We get to celebrate, like you said, a life. That I have, oh God, you know, after 32 years in this profession, I have more than I could ever imagine. I'm grateful and uh, looking forward to seeing more and more things as we move forward. Now, one of the things I want to do is to make sure that if people want to contact Lopez Consulting, what are some of the tools that you're going to bring to them, bring to their table? Here's a phone number you guys can reach out to him. What are some of the tools that you're going to bring to them? What are some of the assessments you're going to give them? What are some of the things as a consultant? Someone is going to bring in Andy Lopez into their organization to come in, help mentor their people, help shape their organization, give them new direction. What are some of the things that you say 
that you yourself bring to the table or the particular funeral home, particular cemetery, the crematory, any sales organization, what would you say you bring to the table for them? I'm, I'm there to change their normal. Uh, when you walk into a place uh, that has been doing business the same way for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, or uh, and that same place is trying to adapt technology to fit their needs, uh, I have resources that I can use to actually connect them with the right vendor at the right time, with the right person, in order to help them succeed in whatever their goals are. Uh, building a sales team, it's not something about as easy as hiring four or five people and saying, here, go sell, because we do not sell to families. We offer options. I teach people when they come in and they want to actually be a counselor in our, in our organization, I don't teach them how to sell. I teach them to share their passion in a way to enable others to take action. There's a big difference there because if you're not passionate about what we do, then you have no reason to be in it. Um, when I go into an organization, I dissect their operations. I want to know wh where are you spending your money? Where are you putting all the effort in a direct mail campaign that has not yielded any money to you, that has not yielded any results that are not measurable, that cannot be calculated, that cannot be proactively decided upon when there are other opportunities in the digital media market where you can actually go in and create campaigns in AdWords, whether it's Facebook, whether it's AdWords, it doesn't matter where you go, even it being a, a commercial on television. You have to adapt the message to fit the audience. And we don't always see the right way to do that when we're in the trenches because you end up having this, for lack of a better term, a myopic view of the business because you've always done it this way. And I help you overcome that phrase. I've always done it this way. It's the most dangerous words in business. Um, I take a retail-minded approach that is centered on what customers need versus centering everything on what we need. For many years, it's, it's no secret. Uh, funeral homes and cemeteries have been built for funeral directors and for cemeterians. We have to change and provide an experience that elevates the level of service, increases the value without breaking the bank, and it eventually creates a relationship with a family that's more than just a financial transaction because that's what we signed up for. Um, and, and, I, and I value being able to go into a business and be trusted with the keys to the door and said, here, help me fix it. Um, building a sales program that is, revolves around what people need, not what you want to show them, but what people need, uh, what your audience wants. Adapt that message correctly. And always remember, um, when it comes to what we do, the quality of the question will always determine the quality of the answer. So it always begins with an assessment, asking questions, understanding the inner core workings of the business, the mindset of the ownership, the mindset of the leadership, um, being in the trenches and finding out where the broken pieces are and building a collaboration rather than separation. Because often in, in organizations, the self um, prevention department is actually the operations department and vice versa. So everybody has to work together. And that's not easy to do, but it can't be done by establishing the norm that there are no barriers, no walls. So I come in with a sledgehammer, I break those walls and get everyone working together. So the message is consistent from one person to the next one to the next one. And the product that we deliver to every family exceeds their expectations. When they get home, all they can talk about was how amazing the experience was and not complain about all the other things that they're picking apart because we did not deliver on our promise. That's what I bring to the table. I bring to wow. the table a different way of doing what we do, but doing it better. Wow, love it. I, I love the fact that you said a couple of very important things, which I love, the quality of the question, quality of the answer. I, I just love that. And in a nutshell, you said we work on our business, not in our business. That is a huge, huge thing. So when you get to be, like you said, the bird's eye view, you're looking down on the operation and you're saying, this is where the problems are. You're coming in as a specialist, dissecting it, being a surgeon, and you're doing it deliberately. You're doing it very creatively, but you're creating an environment 
and an operation so that people can thrive. And one of the things I really think that you talked about is the experience. You know, I think people repeat when they have a good experience. And if they walk into any one of our facilities, a cemetery, a funeral, a crematory, what experience are they having? And I, I think that you really shared that very well. And again, in the black matters, uh, I always say this so is something that, you know, when I go into funerals and cemeteries, I always say, are we helping our guests or will they always walk in our funeral and cemetery guessing what they should do when they die? We have to help our guests. Our Absolutely. guests will walk into our building. They should not be guessing because most families, you talk to them, they always say, well, you guys just bury people. They have no idea that we help families make arrangements in advance. They don't know all the offerings that we have in our uh, arrangement rooms, you know, because most of us not showing them the cremation offerings and all the different things, the different vaults. And like you said, even the blankets and all the keepsakes and the things that we have. Uh, these are the kind of things that I love that you said you have to give people and empower them. Everybody has to be on the same page, but bringing that to the table as a specialist, I really thank you, Mr. Lopez. Is there any questions out there in uh, the web world? Uh, and we, I know we're live on Facebook. We're live on Periscope. We're live. Uh, some people have come from LinkedIn, different places. Okay. Uh, so this, this is very, very important. So as we wrap up, uh, Andy, as you move now, because you're making a big transition here in, in your life, and your career, uh, I see that you guys have been working on your home there. What is that like being up in Seattle now and enjoying that new process? I see it been laying floor and putting up walls, and digging holes. <laughs> You posted. Let me tell you, um, <laughs> it's. it's I, I'm still waiting to see where spring is at. It has. It has been hiding, and uh, it makes. Uh, it, it makes for this Caribbean guy uh, uh, to be a little uneasy because I like the sunlight. I, I like warm weather, and um, when I wake up in the morning, I walk outside in shorts and flip flops, and I realize I need to be in sweats and uh, and a jacket. That's that's not fun. However, it's uh, the most beautiful time of the year out here. It is gorgeous. Um, everything's blooming, uh, it, and and it's uh, it's peaceful. What what's amazing is uh, when when everything is quiet and there's not a whole bunch of air traffic, you hear the birds and you hear nature, um, and you can actually go outside and just sit down and reflect and and listen, uh, be still and listen. Um, it's 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 a beautiful place to be. Uh, when it when it comes to what we do for a living, it, 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 everything has changed. I mean, I was I was 13 years old and I sharpened my English skills, knocking on doors, selling candy door to door. Mm. Um, I learned a script, a simple script, that I knocked on doors and I knew that for every no, I was getting closer to a yes. That was the basic principle. I it cannot really communicate effectively, uh, but I knew the script. And I didn't stop talking until I heard yes or I heard no, but at least I got an answer. Um, those are the things you you can teach the process, but you can't teach the experience. So for everyone that's listening, that's ever been curious about how do you elevate yourself in a sales environment, even an operational environment? How do you change your normal or what you're doing every day? Is Self-evaluation is a big, big tool that not everyone knows how to use. So if you empower yourself to criticize yourself and understand that the processes that you're following every day need to be dissected on a regular basis and, and change the way you do things in order to be better every day. Um, I could have just kept it on talking like this and everybody understand me, but I chose not to. I wanted to get better. I listened. I worked on how I pronounced things. Um, I had great friends who held me accountable. I had a mother who would not allow me to misspell words or say them wrong. Mom would not have that. My experience was different. And what drives me to be who I am today is different. But everyone out there has that why, that, that, that moment in their life that it clicked and you chose to either take advantage of it and transform yourself or ignore it and continue on as usual. So rewinding and finding that, that moment, that catalyst, that that changes you from your core in order to be that much better. Uh, that, that's, what, that, what, that's what the opportunity is. And we, we have those opportunities on a regular basis and we ignore them because our fight or flight mechanisms 
put us in protect mode. Just, well, I don't want to do that. That's, that's new. That's different. I don't want to do it. It scares me. Um, challenge yourselves. Take the leap. But like uh, Steve Harvey says, jump and wait for the parachute to open. Just don't face plant. That's not fun. Excellent. But if you do, get up and keep going. Excellent. Excellent. Mr. Lopez, again, we want to thank you so very much. Uh, this right here is an awesome opportunity that you gave us uh, so that we can go through and share with the profession, you know, at this time that we're going through this uh, pandemic. But the good part about it is this is going to be the new normal. We're going to be able to do this a lot and more often uh, sharing across this platform and to different uh, venues. But at the same time, any funeral home, any cemetery, any crematory that would like to get some insight and some help or even someone to look at your business because you, you're going to need it. I'm saying to every funeral home, every cemetery out there, we are going to need it. It is so important. We uh, need to do that. Someone just asked a question, Andy. Uh, so a random user, what's the best way to get into the funeral? There you go. Somebody wants to get into our profession. That's from Periscope. Somebody would like to get into the profession. So Andy, what would you recommend if they want to get into the funeral profession? Well, uh, first, do, do your research. Find out what firms are in your area where, where you live um, or where you want to live. Um, Identify what the different job titles are. If you want to visit with families directly, do you want to be a crematory operator? Do you want to um, work at, uh, at the cemetery in the grounds? Do you want to sell our products and services to a family, essentially present to families on a daily basis? There are, there are tons of jobs in the profession. So if you go online and apply, and you can apply to mom and pop shops, they're, they're everywhere, they're independent world of the funeral service industry is huge and you also have the consolidators you have sci you have carriage you've got you, you've got stonemore you've got foundation partners you, you've got north star all of those consolidators some of them are actually actively hiring right now and looking for talent people who are dedicated and have a passion for it but most importantly make sure you have a resume that's clean crisp ready and be ready to present yourself in a professional matter when you meet face to face with whoever's going to interview you. But um, I never thought I'd be in this profession as long as I have been in it. Uh, it has been a, a blessing for me. So if you want to know more, you feel free to go on my LinkedIn profile, ask me questions it's, uh, after the fact. But I, I would start by just looking to see who's hiring and, and scheduling an interview and seeing and asking questions or just walking in. Um, to one, any any firm nowadays, or you can call them and speak to a funeral director. See, someone's got five minutes. You'd be surprised how often they're willing to just talk to someone that's interested. And most importantly, if you can't find all that, look at some of the mortuary schools in the area. And sometimes they have days where you can go in and talk to someone about the career. Excellent. That's very good advice. Some of the some of the things that some people ask also about the profession that there's different aspects of it. You want to be sales, you want to be operations, you want to be in the grounds, you know, you want to be maintenance. Uh, there's all different kinds of things. You want to be a, an attendant, you know, people, there's limo drivers, there's hearse drivers. I mean, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of things that you can do in this profession uh, that you may not be aware of. Uh, some funeral homes and cemeteries have flower shops. If you love flowers and you're creative, you can do that. Some people do want to go into bombing, mortuary science and things of that nature. Anything that you can imagine we can do that. Is there any other questions? I know someone said, can, can we ask questions? Uh, I think that a lot of people in the profession, especially those who look at our profession, and if you're not in our profession, you want to look at it. You can send us an email. You can text Andy. Uh, send us something on Facebook. Send us something on Periscope. Let us know. Uh, if you, uh, My uh, email is in my Periscope bio. If you're on my Facebook page live, if you're on my LinkedIn, please send us a message. Same thing with Andy. I know that you are on his Facebook Live. Also, if you come from his LinkedIn account, please reach out to us again. No questions too small. No questions too big. We're here to serve and help. Again, Mr. Andy Lopez, the National Cemetery and Funeral Operations Specialist. We want you to meet him. We thank you for joining us and we will see you next time. And we are really oh, with a they ask, is it necessary to believe in God while working in the industry? No, you don't have to believe in God. 
Uh, but uh, it is something that most people do. A lot of people in the profession do believe in God. We also have some that don't. So it's not necessary to believe in God, but that's a great question. Uh, somebody just asked that question, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, but because Andy and I are believers, so we do share that fellowship together. Uh, it, 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 help, it helps keep us grounded. So we know that and it keeps us our emotions in check. Uh, I believe this, that in any profession, you need to have some emotional stability. I don't care what profession it is. And uh, for me, uh, that's rest, resting in my faith, knowing that I can have some emotional stability and realize that there's someone bigger than me. And I do have a greater purpose in my life. And, and I, I say it this way. If I can give myself away every day, that's what I want to do. I want to give myself away for the greater good just to help people. Like Andy said, how many people have we trained? How many people have we met in life? How many tips have we given someone today they can take care of their family, the children, send them to school, send them to college? You know what? I, I'm very happy about that over 32 years of my career that I have to help empower other people change their life just because they're in this profession. So again, thank you everyone. Mr. Lopez, we will definitely talk to you again and just pause for this commercial break. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.